Welcome back, 0k fans, to Nano Lives at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad Fury333, and this next match, which I think will also be the last match for today, between Flipstep and Kshatriya on Into Battle. So let's begin. There's not really much to talk about other than the match, because the match is going to be taking a little while, so get your popcorn or tea or whatever else you have to just sit there and watch stuff and feel comfortable. Get comfortable. Flipstep going for light vehicles. Kshatri going for jump bots, which we actually have seen on this map fairly recently. Although in that case, it was with the Cloaky player right here. is Don playing Cloaky over here. This time around, though, Kshatri is still going for jump bots, but we are getting light vehicles and cross positions. So more standard star positions set up. Normally, northeast to southwest, that is how the game goes. Flipstep double checking to make sure Kshatri did not go for a cheesy start over on the southeast plateau. And no, they did not. Kshatri going for, like I said, the standard start. And same thing for Kshatriya, double-checking double Flipstep did not go over to the Northwest, making sure that there's nothing tricky going on in either case, and there is not. Both players making sure of that before going off to double-check the Northeast and Southwest, respectively, because, I mean, if you find it right in front of you, that's great, it stops G's. If you don't find it right in front of you, well, you didn't lose too much, because your opponent is quite a ways away, the rush distance isn't so short, they're going to be able to take advantage of that Mistake, well, not mistake, but they're not going to be able to take advantage of you having not gone the right way. And first real battle coming in here. Pyro Fork Shatra should be able to deal a bit of damage. Yeah, the Scorcher off on its own. Another Scorcher coming up, which that's going to be the Defender. But it looks like really the Defender is going to be the Defender. One Metal Extractor down. Is the another one going to go down? No! The Defender and Lotus together managed to stop that Pyro. But still, that's one Metal Extractor down, so Kshatriya right now at a slight economic advantage over Flipstip. Kshatriya continuing to build up their Metal Extractors as well. And they also have an extra one Metal per second. Oh, I see, that was Overdrive. That makes sense. Flipstip, on the other hand, getting that Pyro to themselves. Oh, nice, another, like, ten seconds, roughly, of plus... Oh, okay. Still, plus fifteen Metal for ten seconds. That's not bad at this stage in the game. That's actually gonna help Flipstep come back. That really just takes everything back from here. When you think about the cost of this metal extractor compared to its return, that 10 seconds worth of metal, that 500 metal, or no, well, not 500, the 10 seconds worth of 5 metal, so 50, no, it's more than that. Whatever. The time that it took to harvest that metal over there, which is like 15, 20 seconds of plus 15, that's like two or three metal extractors right there. And metal extractors normally, they would pay for themselves in half a, in about half a minute, 30 seconds or so. Because they cost 75. Well, that pyro more than paid for the metal extractor. That's actually a really tricky thing you have to think about when you're harassing, is that you don't want to necessarily go for the metal extractors. It's usually better to go for power structures if you can. Now, solar collectors, understandably, you don't necessarily want to go for. But one metal extractor could be paid for by your own unit's reclaim. Like, the actual value your opponent gets from reclaiming your unit, that could just end up paying for the Metal Extractor as it has here. So Flipstep is not behind at all. They're actually slightly ahead now that they've gotten a few more static Metal Extractors, and Kshatriya stalling a little bit. They went for a risky expansion over to the northwest. It is starting to build up, but that took longer to expand to. It does mean that Flipstep won't be able to easily harass around Kshatriya's base, but it also means Kshatriya won't be able to easily set up defenses over in the northwest. If Flipstep decides to go to the Northwest with an overwhelming force, that's it. Kshatri loses the Northwest and loses what economic parity at this point they have. Not even advantage, just parity. And I think Kshatri will probably be okay. I don't think Flipstep's going to focus on that too much. Flipstep does seem to be more focused on Kshatri's main base, or the area around Kshatri's main base. They have the one Scorcher over here. The second Scorcher has been burnt to a crisp, so the Northwest will be safe for a little while. And it looks like Shatra, for the most part, is sending units over to the northeast. Yeah, the factory is actually rallied to the northeast. There's a rally point all the way over there. Right here. Not sure if that's going to change anytime soon. Flipstep seems to be pretty focused on trying to hunt down Shatra's main base or just keep that main base area contained. At the same time, though, Slasher is a very good choice to help get rid of the Pyros. Moderators get outranged by Slashers? Really? 420? Yeah, wow, they really do. It's a massive range difference. One shot manages to get through at the cost of the moderator's life, but I think that was probably worth it if there was two moderators. Because then it wouldn't have been the cost of life. 
Just walking in probably would have done the trick. And the Pyro over from the northwest defending, now going to attack the south and is healing up. Could be a little while, but I don't think Flipsip's aware of- No! Flipsip is totally unaware of the Pyro on the plateau near their base. That is a big deal, and another Slasher not dying. Actually, no, that, win. that win will die. Pyro takes off a Slasher posthumously, but still, Flipstep is ahead, way ahead. Kshatria needs to do something to get back to here, because Ksh Flipstep has their entire main base. Kshatria does have the northwest, but they don't have most of the main base area. They don't have this northeast set up at all. There is a Pyro ready to harass, but while it will do a lot of damage if it were to attack once it's healed up, which should be in about 10 seconds or so. Or not 10, what am I saying? 5... Actually, yeah, it is probably about 20... Oh, more like 20 seconds, but still. Yeah, it's not going to take too long. So that Pyro is going in for the harassment over to the southwest, while at the same time, Flipstip trying to attack the northeast, still seeing that Kshatria has not built up in front of their main base. I mean, Kshatria, they are kind of gaining the fact... They're kind of gaining a bit of tempo, I suppose. Flipstip keeps going for this. Ah, oh, that Pyro going to die, not able to accomplish anything, because that Metal Extractor will get healed up pretty soon, and like I said before... That Pyro will pay for the Metal Extractor, so not a big loss there. But yeah, I think Shatru, what they're trying to do is keep Flipstep unable to really harass them. Because if they try to harass, they'll go for the main base, and the main base is actually not that well, pretended, well, well protected, so maybe that's going to be more effective than I thought, or than Kshatra thought. But yeah, I think the idea for Kshatra is to make it so that Flipstep's main idea of where to harass doesn't work. The problem, however, is that Kshatra isn't getting this money. There's 10 metal per second sitting there. Well, yeah, okay, it could get harassed out. But there's also the metal back here, too, that's just sitting there not getting taken. So, why? There's a lot of stuff that isn't going to get harassed out that easily. Especially given that Kshatra is playing jump bot, so this plateau is totally under their control. Nice harassment, by the way. I mean, this plateau over to the southeast, that's getting harassed nicely. But Flipstep right now, they are actually starting to fall by Wow, that's actually really working out for Kshatra. Moderator being forced away. It really does need two or three moderators to deal with these slashers. Shatter needs to build more moderators. They do have a bit more energy, but sorry, energy, more metal. But now, slasher coming in here. Gonna deal with the entire Northwest. So the harassment being repaid in kind by Flipstep. Anyway, with Shatra, they aren't taking this. And while they aren't getting harassed out for it, they're also not taking it in the first place. Like, if they took it and got harassed out, that's one thing. They would actually get some metal from it. If they didn't take it and didn't get harassed out, they might as well have been harassed heavily. It's the same difference. They're making just as much cash. They're making just as much metal. But the difference is that they haven't taken it at all. I don't know what their thinking is. I don't know if they're worried about it getting harassed, or if it's just they hadn't thought about it. But given that they had the out-of-the-way expansion over here, I'm guessing they were afraid of getting harassed. Well, that's exactly what harassment does. That's, that is the value of pressure, is forcing your opponent to do things that are suboptimal in an attempt to avoid getting hurt. Like, an attempt to avoid getting attacked, you end up just being overly defensive or overly passive. And that works too. That works just as well. Although, at the same time, two Scorchers down, the third one will live. But the first two down, that's pretty good for that Pyro. Good defense there. So yeah, I'm guessing Shatter was trying to avoid getting harassed, but like I said, trying to avoid getting harassed is just as bad as getting... Actually, it's worse than getting harassed because you don't have what metal those metal extractors actually get. And as long as they're alive for at least 30 seconds, those metal extractors are worth it. They were making a profit. However, this whole game, the two players have been relatively even economically, harassing around, establishing a front line at this point. Flipstip is actually taking a lot of damage in the back. Mason's gonna go down. This is good. This is exactly what Flipstiff does not want to have happen. Sorry. Yeah, they don't want to have it happen. Shatra, very good move there. That's exactly what you want to do. Kill the workers. Always kill the workers if you can. If at all possible, don't worry about the metal. Don't worry about the energy. Worry about the workers. The workers are what makes the metal and energy happen. Or metal extractors and power plants. That's what makes them happen, is the workers. You stop the workers, you stop the expansion for a minute. And in a game where typically 10 minutes is a long-ish game or medium-length game, one minute of not expanding is a big deal. However, Flipstip continuing to keep the economic advantage. Kshatra, however, continuing to keep that pressure on. And another Mason possibly going to go down. I think this one... Yeah, this one's dead. That's dead. 
It's going to burn up. And another metal extractor down. Unfortunately, that pyro... Yeah, there we go. I'm thinking it's going to die. There's Something's going to kill it. And yeah, Defender. Defender proved me right. And another Mason going to go down too. Kshatra really hunting down those Masons. How many of those are left? Four left. Three over here. So these two are fairly vulnerable. The one over in the back here just getting built up to replace the others. The ones in the front are actually... This one's not super vulnerable. Like, it is kind of vulnerable. And the one back here is not vulnerable at all. However, nice pyro harassment coming in around the thing. Shatra is just keeping the pressure on. Mostly in the south area. This this pyro getting killed pretty quickly. But the problem, of course, is reclaim. The more attacks like this fail, or the more attacks like this involve units dying, the more reclaim flip steps gets, and the longer it takes for Kshatriya to actually get a proper economic advantage. Kshatriya is building up, though, and Kshatriya does have reclaim to work with, so they just need to get that reclaim, and it should probably work out. If anything, it would work out in Kshatriya's favor. And finally, for Kshatriya, the front line has been broken here. These defenders going down. Still a Lotus, still a bunch of Masons to very rapidly build defenses if need be, and they are. Wow, talk about a front line of defenses. The Jack's doing a nice job breaking through. That's pretty much their job, but still. Unfortunately, the Masons moving up front, that is not what they want to do. The Masons getting themselves killed. One goes down trivially, the second one manages to get away. The other two do get away, so the Flipstep Commander is the problem. Flipstep, is your commander going to die? I think not. Commander looks like it's probably going to be healthy enough. Pretty close, but it will live. Like it... Yeah, it's... Darn close to death, though. There's anything else that would come in to kill it. No, there's no other units nearby. Kshatra has no other army, so Flipstep's commander will live. And Flipstep taking the south side of the map. Not hugely, though. The south expansion here just getting rebuilt. The southeast not even being taken yet. It's being guarded, but it's not being expanded to. And Kshatra retaking the northwest, taking the north side. A couple of metal extractors on the plateau. Those need to be taken, too, at some point. But yeah, Kshatra taking the north side rather well. So, at this point, the economy is working out evenly. Kshatriya finally getting the confidence to take their main center of the base. And the leveler's coming in. That is not the right move. Not with Jax around. I guess the levelers were there to deal with the Pyros. Which isn't a terrible idea, though really the Slashers were doing a good job. Dominatrix to deal with the Jax. I can see where that's coming from. Although those are very expensive. I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing Ravagers yet. Not totally surprised, but a bit surprised. Just seemed weird to me. Hey, that one... Now yeah, still getting built up. And another Scorcher over to the side here. Wow, that's... Is that really just the perfect angle that gets around defenders? Apparently, yeah. Apparently that cliff blocked sight. Now, the Lotus will be able to take care of the Scorcher, no problem. But still, those defenders did nothing. And Kshatra continuing to harass with the Jacks over to the side here, which... West of center, just avoiding everything. However, a couple dominatrices are going to come in to try to do what they can. And another slasher around the back. No defenses over here. The Freaker is completely vulnerable. It needs to move back. I don't think Kshatra is focused on that at all. They're focused on the Jacks. And now they're probably focused on the dominatrices coming in to try to take the Jacks. One of the Jacks about to go to the other side. And yeah, that's a second Jack about to be captured. There it goes. Captured before it hits the ground. So those Dominatrices are proving to be somewhat useful. They're always a gamble, though. Dominatrix is one of the more expensive units in the light vehicle factory, and it's really hard to use well, because if you don't use it properly, you end up basically wasting 400 metal a pop. And in practice, it is usually like four or five of them, so you're wasting like 1,600 to 2,000 metal a pop. Which is a big deal, and Flipstep losing the eastern side of the south side of the expansion, the southeast plateau, going down, Kshatra taking that, but still Flipstep way ahead economically. They have quite a bit of reclaim to work with, and they have been reclaiming constantly. I mean, Kshatra doing a good job getting rid of the Masons, but Flipstep's been doing a good job reclaiming consistently around this game. Kshatra, their static economy is stronger, but that's about it. And of course, the Dominatrices here... What I'm not seeing is puppies. And against Dominatrix, especially Dominatrix holding jacks, I would expect puppies. I mean, there's so much reclaim on the field, you could get five or six for free for every one of these corpses just about. Well, okay, I'm exaggerating, but still. The reclaim field would probably be able to double just about any number of puppies that would likely thrown, be thrown at them. And the Dominatrix, what are they going to do? Capture a puppy? Wow, big whoop. So one of them detonates another one. That's not a big deal. 
but they're fast enough they could easily deal with the dominatrices without having any real concern of being captured. It wouldn't matter if they were captured. They're going to die soon after anyway. Anyway, the Pyros are going to be able to deal a bit of damage. That works too. Alright, I guess that works too. Bit of a gamble though. It really came down to numbers in that one. I still think puppies would have been a better option, but... Eh, it works alright. But against Rapiers, this is where puppies are going to be very handy. If they come up. But it looks like Shatter going for an Archangel instead, which... That's the anti-air. That makes sense. Puppies, however, are such a good anti- It's like, they're such a good unit! Puppies are so awesome! I know I'm gushing about puppies right now, but... Puppies are really the way to go. It's always good to have puppies in your life. Unless you're the other player, in which case it's actually bad, because they kill you. But otherwise, if you're playing as Jump Bot Factory, you want to have... You want to at least think about the fact that puppies are pretty good anti-air. And when you're dealing with Dominatrices or other expensive utility units like that, yeah, they deal a lot of damage. Jumping Pyros are not bad. Oh, it's kind of a cute trick there. Getting rid of a couple Rapiers was just about free. Just jumping the Pyros up there for having the essentially the splash damage of the flames in midair. Very clever. I like that. But yeah, the Dommies are still being a problem. Continuing to be a problem. The Pyro is doing a nice job. I mean, the Pyros aren't bad at dealing with Dominatrix. It's just... I feel like the Pyros involve a lot of extra work to make them work really well. There's a lot of jumping that has to be done. A lot of very careful micromanagement. Granted, part of the Jump Bot Factory is its micromanagement intensive. But I just feel like it's unnecessary. Like, it works, but it's not optimal. But still, it's working, so I'm not going to criticize it too much. Flipstep switching over to Banshees, which is going to be a lot harder for the Pyros to deal with. Actually, wait, no, what am I saying? No, it's the opposite. It's going to be a lot easier for the Pyros to deal with. The Rapiers are the hard ones. The Banshees are easy. The Banshees are going to hang around the Pyros while the Pyros burn them. Rapiers, on the other hand, can hit and run. So yeah, I'm not sure what the idea for the Banshees is. I think the Banshees might just be around avoiding the Pyros entirely, going around and either killing the Commander directly or killing the main base directly. One of the two. Or possibly going to the outside expansions, but not likely dealing with the Pyros directly because Riot units are typically a good choice when dealing with... What is holding on to this Pyro? Oh, wait a sec. Oh! Flips have got a Lazarus device! Okay, that explains it. I'm thinking, there's no Dominatrix there. What's going on? Resurrections was going on. And Cloakybot Factory as well. Light vehicle still being kind of used, but okay, we're seeing Cloakies. Are we seeing erasers? Or ticks? Or what, exactly? Nope, Banshees are being used on the Pyros. This is kind of curious. I mean, typically speaking, Riots work really well against Banshees. More so things like Warriors than Pyros, but... Yeah, that was... If both of those Pyros were near that Banshee, it would have been death. So that's really risky. Still, flips to put that Lazarus device is going to be very tricky to deal with. It does mean that Flipstep won't have quite as much of an economic advantage from all the reclaim, but it does mean that Kshatcher is going to have to deal with these units over and over and over again, and every unit they lose is now going to be used against them. By the way, Lazarus Device is one of my favorite modules in Commanders. It's tricky to use, but it's so cool when it works out. Flipstep continuing to get harassed, Kshatcher moving around the map, harassing everything they can, and Zeus coming in to deal with the Pyros. Okay, that's what it is. Zeus to anti-Pyro, and at this point, Moderators actually would probably be really handy. For both Anti-Air and Anti-Zeus. But at the same time, with all the factories being built up and the Scorchers coming in, that would easily deal with the Moderators with enough Scorchers. So I don't really expect Shatra to go for Scorchers. Sorry, of course they won't. That would require a factory switch. I don't expect them to go for Moderators. I expect them to go for Pyro Jack, as they have been so far. They've made it very clear that Pyro Jack is what they think will win the game. And that does not seem likely with the Zeus coming in here. And, of course, the resurrected Jacks and Pyros. Although, on the other hand, Flipstep actually losing a lot of their economic advantage. Kshatriya, 39 metal. I mean, part of that's Reclaim, but still 29 static to Flipstep, 17. And Kshatriya has a lot of Reclaim to work with, so really, I might as well just count it as 39 for now. Main base getting wiped out. This is it. This main base is gone. Flipstep's going to lose that. And... Or are they? Are the defenders really going to do that much damage? I think the Pyros are primarily going to live. Two of them are going to die right away. Oh, no. That Lotus is actually doing a much stronger job than I thought. 
Good harassment, but not enough. I consistently underrate defenders, don't I? Yeah, I think I do. So, that is an attempt. That was an attempt. Flipsit's commander, however, is going to go down. Down goes Flipsit's commander. But while that is a big blow, seeing as, you know, Lazarus' device was actually something Flipstick was really building the strategy around, the Dominatrix, that's still a thing. They still exist, and the Light Vehicle Factory was not destroyed. I mean, there's only one Domi right now. But still, as soon as that goes down, that's going to be a problem. I mean, Flipstick, they're getting hit hard, but they haven't really fallen yet. All they really need is one good mason going around, expanding, getting their economic advantage back. It'll take a couple minutes, which, like I said, is a long time in this game. But still, that's not that long. It's long, but I think they'll survive it. Because right now, Kshatri is so focused on getting rid of Flipsip's main base, and possibly getting rid of this, de this defending dominatrix. There's so much focus on breaking this. And, I mean, it's in fits and starts managing to deal a fair amount of damage, but it's not killing Flipstip. And there's a mason over here that's just going to be able to do whatever it wants. Like, build up metal extractors. The one thing is, I'm a bit surprised that it's not going on high priority. I mean, the factory's at low priority. That's a good thing. You want that. But what I'm surprised at is that the mason's not high priority as it tries to rebuild everything. Because it needs to be rebuilding everything. The, the caretaker as well needs to be helping out. It is reclaiming. That works too. That's very helpful. That'll keep Flipsta from being too far behind economically. They're still behind, but at least with some reclaim, that'll help them stay in. With the commander right there, caretakers around, at least in the main base. There isn't any in the expansion over here, the fire base in the, in the center of the map. But the main base, that at least has one. And it has, well, 200 metal with reclaim, so it's like 23 seconds of reclaim extra income. Like, I think from here, yeah, I'd say 30 seconds or so at plus 20 or so. On top of the Freakers that are help sorry, the Conjurers that are helping out over in the center of the map. That's actually managing to get quite a lot of economic... It's very nearly economic parity. That's good. That's exactly what Flipstep needs. I mean, we're at the stage in the game where Reclaim is more important than Static Economy. Or almost more important. It's not quite that stage in the game. Normally the stage in the game is when Static Economy is full up. And that's not happened this game, and I doubt it'll ever happen this game because of the amount of harassment. Power's in the back, helping deal with some stuff. Banshee's over to the north. In Kshatriya's base. About to go down, but... Did a good job anyway. That Jack just... Yes, it did. It just speared a Banshee out of the sky. Well done, Jack. In Kshatriya time to take the southeast plateau. I mean, the thing with the Reclaim, though, is that Flipstep needs to Reclaim to stay on par. Kshatriya can use Reclaim to get ahead. And maintain an advantage. And the Pyros, once again, into the main base. They're not gonna live. They're not even gonna get rid of the Mason. They're gonna try... Or are they? No, they are going to get rid of the Mason. Never mind, that Mason's down. And jumping away intelligently. That's exactly what they need to do. Keep the Pyro there as extra pressure. Make sure Flipstep has to look for it. Though Flipstep knows... I don't know where it is. Is this radar non-functional? Like... Oh yeah, I guess it is. There's not enough energy. That radar is actually not working. Like, one of them is, but yeah. I guess you can tell, because it's not spinning. Or... Fully built, for that matter, actually, come to think of it. That radar is incomplete. So, another attack to the main base, another failure, another chunk of reclaim coming in for Flipstip. Kshatriya is starting to donate metal, though they did get rid of the Cloakybot factory. That is sort of useful, although really the Dominatrix is probably the bigger problem, but the, Zeus, the Zeuses are an issue. Now, if the gunship plant goes down, that's a bigger deal, and the gunship plant is not going to go down thanks to the Dominatrices stealing all those jacks. And there are still some Conjurers alive. Quite a few, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of Conjurers that are still in this. So that's a lot of Reclaim that Flipstip can still take. That's 20 metal worth of Reclaim. 15 metal worth of Reclaim. One of them just died. But that's not bad. And, of course, Masons can still be built up. And that's a third Dominatrix. More Dommies are being built. And now the Caretaker done with that Reclaim. But Flipstep getting more and more Static Economy going. And, of course, has a lot more Reclaim to work with. Mind you, it's the Mason's Reclaim, so it's a bit slower, 5 metal per second, but that's not bad. Flipstep's still holding on. I feel like Shatra's best bet right now, I know this is hard, and I've been here before, it's difficult to know how to deal with this, because you know that you're applying pressure, but if you stop applying pressure, your opponent will counterattack, so you need to keep applying pressure. However, I 
don't know that Flipsip's counterattack would deal a huge amount of damage considering the economic disadvantage that Flipsip has. They have this army, but that's about it. Now the Dominatrices are scary, and this is why I would suggest puppies. But what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to say is something like a Missile Silo, or some other switch that basically allows for a way of getting rid of an army without applying pressure. Just deals a killing blow, or deals enough of a softening blow that the main killing blow can actually do its job. That's probably the way to go. Now granted at this point, Flipstep only has the Light Vehicle Factory. That's it. That's all Flipstep has. And that's possibly about to go down. Yeah, that is about to go down. Flips have about to lose their last factory, and there are still workers on the field. There's a mason over back here. The factory is down. There it goes. But the problem, of course, is that Flipstep is continuing to build their army from Kshatriya's army. Really, the best thing Kshatriya's units can do right now is die. Because if they die, they don't get taken by the Dominatrix. Or, obviously, kill the Dominatrixes. That's the other good option. But really, if they're dead, they can't be captured. That's not the best position to be in. But Flipstep is basically living entirely from Dominatrices. And the few builders around here. I mean, there's a Conjurer or two. Flipstep going for the storage. I'm guessing they're going to want to build up a factory just as a surge build. Just push out one factory of, with all the metal and energy they have. And yes, they are going to be building a Cloakybot factory. Very rapidly setting that up. I guess more Zeus's. I mean, when you consider that... Kshatri has been going pure pyro jack this entire time. Although they do have a firewalker under construction, that's also good for the exact same reason the Inferno Missile is. Softens everything up. Also a good option. Either way, Kshatri is at least letting themselves breathe, think about this for a second, and go for an option that works better against what they're dealing with. The one thing, though, I noticed right now, Flipstep sending back Kshatri's units... No Dominatrices over here, so while Kshatra's army may be thinned out a little bit, Flipstep's going to lose all of the units they've captured, without capturing new units. Unfortunately, that does expose the Firewalker early. Not sure that's going to make a difference, though. Flipstep can't really do much about it. That Firewalker just has a giant fire range, just needs to get close. I think. Is that Firewalker going to get close? It doesn't have to get that close. It's got, what, 800 range? 900 range. Yeah, it doesn't need to get that close, just... Get, like, to here, and then fire over here, and burn everything. That's a good idea, burning things. I, I support that idea, in this case, at least. Arson isn't always the answer, but when you're playing the Jump Bot Factory, yeah, yeah, it is. It's always the answer. Just burn everything. So, Shachar's economic advantage is... Really, I don't know what to say about this. Kshatri does have a hidden Cloakybot factory over to the side. Not sure what the goal is there. I mean, if it's a hidden factory, I don't know. They also have a gunship plant going for brawlers. Hidden Cloakybot factory. I don't know. Ticks, maybe. Eraser ticks, maybe. Eraser warriors, maybe. If it's that close, warrior would make sense just given this fact that you don't have as much of a travel distance. Although, to be fair, it's actually to the center of the map. About the same travel distance from this factory as it would be from the main base. Like, ticks are the only real surprise option you have. Eraser ticks, that's the only thing I can think of. Any other option would just, it would work, but it would be kind of silly to have it as a hidden factory. Like, Glaive, maybe. Just because it would be a large army that the Dominatrices can't deal with that would be able to harass through. And there's not a whole lot of defense. There's actually no anti-ground defense other than Stingers, and Stingers are not that great against light units. And the Dominatrix is about to go down. One of them down. The second one about to go down. Yes, that burns up. Freeing a few more units, and all the units are freed. Flipstep has retaken... Sorry, Kshatri has retaken all the control of the units. Size, of course. Why didn't I think about size? That would be another thing. That's actually Flipstep's size. That's not Kshatri's size. Wow! Point Blank Firewalker! I have never seen that before, but that scythe did not know what hit it. That was pretty cool, actually. Just boom, fire, right to the face. But yeah, scythe could be an option. And that is, in fact, the option. That's what Kshatri is going for. A bunch of scythes going around, probably going to get rid of... I don't know what, actually. Dominatrices are dead. The factory's gone. 
I guess they could come in and deal with whatever else that Flipstip has set up, but... Yeah, the Scythes... I don't know what their purpose is right now. Brawlers, on the other hand, I do know what their purpose is. Softening up this entire area, wiping it all out, and making sure that nothing ever grows here again. Which has been Chapter's MO for the most part, as best as they can, but Flipstip has just been coming back and coming back and coming back. I mean, Flipstip, they're at a massive disadvantage, so I'm not sure what chance they have. It's kind of down to Kshatria to actually wipe them out. But Flipstip has been hanging on. They've been holding on very hard, and Razor's being built up. Desperate attempt to get rid of the Brawlers will probably fail, but it's worth a shot. I mean, with the Firewalkers on top of that, the Firewalkers will probably burn up the Razors as the Brawlers come in. But no, the Firewalkers are not close enough. A bit too scared of the Scythes to come in, and that means the Brawlers are going to have very little support to deal with this. Focusing on the Workers instead, because that's what you do. Although, in this case, three Brawlers have gone down. And is that going to be a fourth? No, the fourth one's fine. But still, those Scythes are scary. Completely stopping that Firewalking from getting close enough to deal with the Razors when the Razors were open and vulnerable. It's like everything that Kshatra tries to do just gets completely countered by Flipstep. I mean, Kshatra could build a bloody... What's it called? The Nuke Silo. Why can't I remember the name of the Nuke Silo? Silencer? I think so. They could build a Nuke Silo. They could build a full-on Nuke Silo. Like, strategic Nuke Silo. It is a Silencer, yeah. They could build a Silencer. It would take a few minutes, but they've got such an economic advantage, they could hold on. Like, Flipstep has been defending really well, but Kshatra basically is giving Flipstep everything they need to get back in the game. If Kshatra doesn't attack Flipstep, just keeps Flipstep contained, Flipstep can't do anything. And then Kshatra could build a nuke or something and would have more than enough money to do that while still maintaining a containment and then wipe out this entire base in one fell swoop. I know it's ridiculous, but at this stage, that's the economic advantage difference. It's just that Kshatra is not able to really finish it. That's been the problem this entire game. Like, for 15 minutes, Flipstep has been at a disadvantage compared to Kshatri. Kshatri just can't break in. Flipstep has been defending way too well for Flip for Kshatri to be able to actually make any real headway. There's been a containment. This base was destroyed for a while and now it's rebuilt. And there's a lot of harassment going on from Kshatri to stop Flipstep from building up. But every unit that Kshatri loses, that's more reclaim for Flipstep. At this point, Flipstep, they've got 3,000 metal worth of reclaim that they can easily take. And how many conjurers do they even have? They've got five conjurers? That's 25 metal per second. And that would last them for two minutes. No. That would last them easily three minutes. Not to mention all the new stuff that comes in and the fact that I didn't even count all the reclaim. Flipstep can easily get economic parity, if not an advantage, just because of all the stuff Kshatri has been throwing at them. And now the sides have been revealed as well. I mean... Kshatri is just having a really hard time trying to close this game out. I mean, keep, I mean, Inferno Missiles are what I would do. That's the sane option. The insane option is obviously the Silencer. Though, like I said, a few minutes ago that wouldn't have been that insane. And by now it would have actually been built up and ready and able to fire a nuke. And then Flipstep would lose their entire base and most of their army. And then Kshatri would be able to just wipe out the rest of it with whatever army Kshatri had. But yeah, a nuke silo for Infernos would probably finish this game just by softening up the main base enough to allow it to be wiped through. But at this point, flipped up Cloaky and Jump Bot. Going for puppies themselves! Finally! Finally we see puppies! I've been waiting for this all game! And it's from Flipstip. Going for the puppies. And that's a really good defensive option. It's a good idea to go for that. However, at the same time, more of Flipstip's army getting torn to shreds. More of Kshatri's army also getting lost, though, as usual. And an Eraser coming in. This might turn it around. If it weren't on fire, at least. Walking into fire is generally hazardous. Not recommended, but yeah. Other than the burning... That Eraser... Is that... that tell me... No, that's not even rally to that point. It just went there. But yeah. Eraser. That's potentially a game-changer. Because right now, a lot of what Kshatri is trying to do is either push in with units that have range or push in with heavier units. Now, the heavier units, not really going to be helpful with the Eraser. 
But the ranged stuff, yeah. The Stinger, the Firewalker, and just getting into Kshatra's main base, which isn't that well defended. I mean, look at the base here. Flip step, all these overlapping circles. Most, All the green ones are razors. That's all anti here. But everything else, that's still anti-ground. And Flip step has been consistently heavy on their defenses the entire game. They've been doing everything they can to make sure that their defenses are everywhere. Kshatra, on the other hand, they've practically been naked. This is a bit of a new development, these lotuses over to the side here. But for the most part, they have been basically naked. A good cloaked army of warriors and Zeus's, that would probably be able to break through and deal a huge amount of damage to Kshatri's base. However, it would be a Hail Mary pass. Like, it is a one last desperate attempt thing. Could work, but I don't know. One shot, if it works, it would probably work really well. If it doesn't work, that's game. And at this point, the amount of energy is making it not even, even possible to begin with. The Eraser running out of energy, not able to even act as size move into the base and won't be able to deal much damage. Maybe get rid of a Metal Extractor or two, otherwise they're going down. But the Eraser has been revealed. Shatra knows to look out for that. Like, And not to mention, the Firewalker is definitely causing problems. I mean, the fire decloaks. That's what it does. It deals damage. Damaged units do not cloak. Flipstep's still in a decent position, but Kshatra just needs to close this out. Going for a Strider Hub? That's another option. That's... I guess I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that because, honestly, Flipstep has been setting up so many defenses and has been holding off any incoming attacks so well that I figure going in with units just isn't really the strategy to go for. Flipstep can deal with units. They've been dealing with units for the last 20 minutes at a disadvantage. It's non-unit threats that they can't deal with, or that they probably aren't prepared to deal with. I mean, an Inferno is not necessarily the best option, but still. Something that's not easily countered by just throwing bodies at it, that's what Kshatriya needs to close this out. Now, the Strider will probably do its job. It is a Dante, and Dantes are quite tough and quite powerful, so it'll probably finish things off. But... This is still basically trying to push yourself against the wall. I don't know. It, it'll probably work. It's just, like I said, Kshatra's just doing the same thing, but more. And it might be enough. It's just not as straightforward that it's going to work. And I guess I just like straightforward solutions that they're probably not going to be countered. Just going around what my opponent is doing. Instead of trying to push and push and push, just do what they're not prepared to defend. And that Firewalker being a bit treasonous, well, or rather the... Oh, it's Constables now! It's not Freakers! Right, I forgot they changed the name. The Constables! That's the jump bot Constructor. Apparently the Constable wants to burn. I mean, Kshatra... Keeping the pressure on. And that Dante is going to be done in about a minute or so. So not much longer now, the Dante should be finished. Jax... I mean, they're going to have no problems dealing with the, I mean, the Warriors, maybe. Once the jump's available... Why is the Jack not jumping? That Jack can jump. Well, that Jack's dead now. Don't know why it didn't jump. And Firewalkers on both sides. Flips to finally getting a Firewalker up, but that doesn't matter at this point. Like, Kshatra is just flanking everywhere. They have units all around. They have Kshatra contained. They've had Kshatra contained this entire time. And I think with all these units on all sides, plus the Dante... I mean, it's still, you're still doing the same thing you've been doing before, but more. It just might be enough. However, Flipstep also going for a Strider Hub. It's going to take a lot longer, though. Their Strider Hub's going to be done when the Dante's... Actually, no, before the Dante. Whoa, 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 never mind. Their Strider Hub's not going to be done until the Dante arrives, and maybe not even then. If they focus everything on the Strider Hub, it might be done by the time that the Dante gets there. But, yeah, Flipstep does not have the economy to really support that. 21 metal per second, that's on the low end, and that's if you're early on in the game where you're fairly certain that you and your opponent are even economically. I'm sure Flipstep knows Kshatra's ahead. 21 metal, going for that, that's really risky. It might work, but that and the sumo, yeah. And, no, the Strider Hub's not even getting finished. This is, I think, game. The Zeus should finish it off, and if they don't finish it off, well, the Dante's right here, so that'll finish it off. I think that's gonna be it. 
few puppies trying to deal with what's left, but honestly, that's not going to help too much. Kshatra's just on all sides. They've got more than enough of an economy to deal with this. Sumos aren't necessarily great at coming back. They're okay, but they're not great. And Flipstep throws in the towel, finally. Good tenacity, but not quite enough. And Kshatra, I don't know. Like, it was good tenacity, but I still feel like Kshatra never really quite pushed hard enough if they were trying to go for a push hard. And, of course, they didn't go for any alternate strategies that weren't just push harder. But, yeah, that was... That was that. A lot more pyro usage than I expected. Normally, they switch off for moderators, but... Not in this case. Stuck with the pyros. Shatra taking that... Burnt... Wow! Almost 30,000 worth of metal burnt. By Kshatriya. Actually, considering their damage, half of their damage was fire. More than half, actually. 2,000 metal, more than half of their damage was fire. Specifically fire. And they got hurt. And apparently they got damaged six, no, seven times as much as they damaged Flipstep. Wow. See, so unit value, pretty close up until about the 30 minute mark. I mean, that's the thing, is that Kshatra, they had an economic disadvantage for most of the game, like, around here and on, which would be about the 15-minute mark or so. That's where the economic trouble started. But unit value compared to that, they're, I mean, Flipsip's army was really strong, and that was the thing. Kshatra never really got an army that was overwhelming enough to get through until near the end. And they kept going for army, 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 rather than going for artillery or going for nukes or going for any other kind of long-range assault that's not easily dealt with other than by shields. And people generally don't build shield generators, even though that is a thing anyone can build. But yeah, that didn't happen. And Flipstep... Wow! 12k metal reclaim for Flipstep, and 5,000 for Kshatriya. Also really good. 2,000 excess for Flipstep, 1,000 for Kshatriya, 2,500 for Flipstep, 1,000 for Kshatriya. I mean, Kshatriya definitely had a higher income. Definitely had way more metal. Despite that, the unit value is actually really close, but yeah. Way more metal. Because that's what happens over a 40 minute game when you have an economic advantage from minute 15. Even though the damage, like, that's what I mean. Like, there was never an overwhelming force. And I know that feeling. It's so hard when you're trying to just beat your opponent. You're like, why won't you die? Just die already for crying out loud. Why are you still standing there? That's what you're thinking. You're thinking the entire time, why won't you die? And that, that's a really annoying thing to have in your head. Really pushes you to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And one of the mistakes you can make doing that is that you end up feeding your opponent so much metal or just losing so many units because your forces are never quite overwhelming enough and they keep losing that your opponent is able to come back. And that's super frustrating. I mean, in this case, Kshatriya still won, but it took 20 minutes more than it probably should have. Or at least 15 minutes. Like, type counters, or a larger overwhelming force, or just using artillery, like Firewalker sooner, or using Infernos, that would have ended the match a lot sooner. And that's the thing, is like, when you're in that situation, you've always got to step back and think, okay, how much pressure do I actually have to do? Can I just get away with containing and holding on, and defending a little bit, while building up an artillery piece or something that'll actually end the game? Rather than just pushing and pushing and pushing like I'm in the middle of World War One, Because that doesn't work. So yeah, it's just, it's so tempting to throw your units into the meat grinder just to try and hope that's going to be the one that'll do it. Usually that's suicide, or at least it's not usually the best idea. But it worked out in this case, just took a long time. Anyway, that's that. That's going to be it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And until next time... Have a good night, everyone. Or, yeah, that's right. Have a good night.